Hello, the Parlay podcast listeners. This is your host, Chloe, from the visual media team. And today we have with me, us, here today, Alyssa. So please introduce yourself, Alyssa. Let us know what teams you're on for the Parlay magazine. And and then we'll get some started with some questions. I'm Alyssa. Um, I'm on the website team for the Parlay. I'm also on the marketing team and the visual media team. And in my free time, I do art and photography, and I'm currently an art major. Cool. Okay, so before we get started, sorry, I'm a hand talker, so if like you hear my rings clank, that's probably why. But we just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this sounds so official. But Ooh. yeah, so we just want to, you know, the podcast is a great way to make art more accessible, and we're just glad to have you guys joining us. Um, so yeah, we're going to get started. So I just wanted to ask you some questions about your photography, and then we'll also go into like your art pieces as well. Alyssa submitted a good amount of stuff to our magazine, so you guys will be seeing a lot of good stuff from her. Um, so the first picture I want to ask about, or we can talk about all of them. I don't know. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about, um, is the, your dragonfly. Oh, I just hit the mic with my chin. Sorry. Your dragonfly picture. So... Tell us about the title, maybe, of the picture, like where you took it, why you have Alyssa has a lot of pictures of bugs. So maybe like why you're like really into bugs and why you like taking pictures of them. Sure. So I took most of my photography, especially of bugs in my own yard. I live on five acres, so there's a lot of bugs, a lot of bugs on my property, a lot of flowers, a lot of nature. So I'm able to see a lot of different creatures every day. Um, I chose Kaleidoscope to title this picture just because of all the color everywhere. I felt like it was kind of magical, like the purple flowers and then the almost like ombre stripe on the dragonfly. I was a big fan of that. Um, and I, I'm just a big fan of bugs in general, which is part of why I take pictures of so many bugs but I also feel like they're maybe a little bit overlooked they're looked at as like gross so I like taking pictures of them and making them look pretty and then maybe people will have a second second thought about it I don't know yeah no that's definitely cool before I saw Alyssa's pictures the bugs were definitely I was like oh cool that's a huge close-up picture of a dragonfly but you know I used to be kind of scared of bugs but Alyssa makes them look really pretty and Thank nice. You. There are some really funny pictures of some praying mantises that we'll get to see later. Those or you guys won't get favorite. to see. Actually, do they see this while they listen to it? I don't know. You'll be no. able to see it on the website. <laughs> I think so. You can look at Alyssa's pictures on the website while you're listening to this podcast episode. So, okay. So you mentioned that you kind of have a lot of bugs on like your property. Um, how is it like, do you kind of just like go out and explore and kind of just like take your camera with you wherever you go, like expecting to see, like, you know, the bug spots or like, I kind of do. Yeah. I, um, I started out photographing bugs because I had just grown a really big interest into them as creatures. For a while I was considering like studying them, uh, as a major, but I didn't end up following through with that. Um, but I, I just kind of studied them on my own in my yard. And so I'll kind of make a circle around the front lawn. I'll know usually where most of the praying mantises like to be because they'll hang out in the same spot. But the other bugs are a lot more fickle. I just kind of get lucky when I see them. And a lot of the time I'll follow noises. So I have one photo that's not in here of a cicada. And I just heard them like screeching and I just followed them down the hill and I saw one. Do you catch bugs ever? Are you no. a bug catcher? Oh, I mean, I definitely like to pick them up, but I don't. You let I them roam them. free. That's yeah. good. That's good. Um, okay, so I was like, I want to ask about at least my favorite bug picture that you have is the one of the praying mantis. I think it's the one with like the pink flowers. So you were kind of mentioning that you know where all these praying mantises are. Are they like near your house? Like, do you go here often? So you kind of just know like. Because I don't know much about praying mantis. Are they like their all seasons? Like are they most prominent during the fall, spring, winter? It definitely depends on, on your area. But where we live, it takes a little longer to warm up. So we usually start seeing babies by the end of 
mid June, maybe. Um, and then they'll be around until the end of August, maybe October, depending on how cold it gets. Mm hmm. Wow, cool. I feel like this this episode's gonna be like a little National Geographic like <laughs> bug fact. I mean, do you have like a fun bug fact that you wanna tell the tell a group? Sure. Some of my favorites are stick bugs. Um a lot of my favorite stick bugs are from Australia, but that's a little off topic. Um, but almost all species of stick bugs, the females can have babies without any male so they are considered highly invasive because of that but I think it's pretty cool oh yeah totally totally um is there anything else that you kind of want to talk about with in regards like to for to photography or like your photography for bugs or like what other things do you like to photograph other than bugs like I know you love poppies right is I it do. the California poppies yes the orange ones um so yeah just tell us about like what other things you like to take pictures of and like what inspires you I think just weird things in nature inspire me. So definitely bugs are one of those. But I also really love bright, obnoxious flowers. Like I, I feel like poppies definitely encompass that. I, I drive an hour to get a FLC and I can see them pretty much all over the hills when I drive because they're so bright. And I I like that they stand out. Yeah. Guys, Alyssa was like poppy hunting for a little bit. <laughs> like every time we would see a picture of it, we'd like send her a picture of it in the group chat. Cause I literally passed by this house once. It's kind like, of off topic. It? No. And it's like their front yard is like covered in poppies. Like they have poppies all year round. But one of my friends said it's really sad because in the winter, they're all like closed or like when the sun sets, they're yeah, all closed, when the sun sets. which I like didn't know that. So that's super interesting. Like, but their whole front yard is just kind of dead in the night so maybe don't drive by their house when it's nighttime but yeah cool I'm still hoping to get some good camera pictures with the poppies we actually yeah. don't get those at our house until June also we don't have any right now really yeah. I feel like we, I mean, we just now got tulips oh tulips <laughs> are so pretty I mean there's like a super bloom happening right now I feel like so it takes a little longer to reach our neck of the woods I guess yeah. I mean I guess here in Folsom, everything's dead by June. So <laughs> that's good. You have to wait a little bit longer, but at least you have something during the summer when everything else is dead. Um, but cool. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. Um, let me just think of what we talk about next. <laughs> Should we talk about your sunflower? If you want. Oh go my for goodness. It. Yeah. So we had a couple, we had a couple other people in the visual media team. They loved this picture. Um, like, tell us about maybe like where, where you took this picture, um, question mark, <laughs> where you took this picture, maybe what your favorite flower is, if it's not the poppies. Um, yeah, let's start there. Um, this one was also taken in my yard. <laughs> I love we, that. My dad has gotten these poppies, um, I don't know where he got them, but they're just kind of, they grow like weeds. And we have a whole section of our front yard that is just like a line of poppies and they get, they get taller than me. They get really tall. So I took this one, like pointing the camera upwards cause it was taller than me. Um, and I just really liked how the sun went off of it. And I thought it, I thought it almost had like character to it. Like it was more than a sunflower. No, definitely. I mean, I love sunflowers. I am from Kansas. So that's like our, I think that's our state flower. I want to say. I got to so. say poppies are my favorite though. Oh, okay. No, that's valid. That's valid. True I Californian. I am not a fan of roses though. Oh, interesting. Why not? They're just too classy for me, if that makes sense. Oh, um, like, no, they I don't get that. feel free. And the other flowers feel free to me, I get which that. is very artsy language, but <laughs> okay, Alyssa. Okay. <laughs> no, I get that. I mean, we literally, I think I have a rose bush like in front of my house, but it only produces like maybe two roses a year. So I'm like, wow, all that work for literally two roses. But anyway, my dad will put that in the bathroom. Irrelevant, but he'll put it in the bathroom to make it smell better. <laughs> they but, do smell pretty good. Yeah. No, I get it. Um, cool 
definitely love those ones. Oh my gosh, I want to hear about your trip to the Grand Canyon because I know I heard a little bit of it, but tell our listeners because um, Alyssa did take a couple of pictures that is website only, I believe. So you guys get like a little extra bonus um, of from her trip of the Grand Canyon. So maybe tell us a little bit about, I don't know, the Grand Canyon is just such a great place. It's so cool. It's so pretty there. So it is Thanks super pretty. Um, I went over spring break and we were in Arizona. My family was in Arizona to go visit some other members of my family. And we drove and we figured we should visit this on the way home because we'd never seen it before. Um, and I thought it was just like crazy to look at. It was like looking at a painting, like it almost didn't feel real. It was so huge. So... I mean, it was inspiring in that way for sure. I thought it was really cool. It was really different than what I see at home. So that was fun. No, definitely. I feel like whenever I go or when I went there, because I went like maybe three years ago, I was like, I feel like any natural like wonder like that, you're kind of like, I don't know how that came to be. Like, it's so weird. I know. I was definitely wondering that. I'm like, yeah. I took a geology class and I was trying to use my knowledge, but yeah. um, my, my guess was wrong. No. And my sister is also scared of heights. So we would like go on hikes and stuff. And like, you're kind of like close to like cliffs. Like, I don't know. And definitely like some people will do it for anything for the Instagram, you know, so they'll like go <laughs> all the way down. And one time I literally saw this family, like their kid was like about to fall off the cliff. Cause like, they just like weren't watching their little toddler. And I was like, Oh, anyway, more of the story. Watch your kids. If you're at the Please. Grand Canyon, because I don't, I, I don't have a height thing, but it was, it was magnificent to look at. It was like, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to climb down there, but yeah, no, was same. not going to do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> no, literally. No, I feel like if I was there, I would just take pictures of literally everything. I took but. so many I had to go through and I shot them all in raw. So I couldn't actually save any of them till I edited them. And I, I think I edited about like 50 individual pictures because I wanted to keep them all. Yeah, no, that was definitely the case for me too. Although my dad takes pictures of like literally everything. So, I mean, you guys are probably very similar in that. Um, well, I kind of want to talk about your B picture. <laughs> go for it. I love your B picture. You guys have to go look at these pictures if you're on our website, which you should be on our website. If you're you listening to this, yeah, <laughs> make sure you go and tell your friends about our website. It's really cool. We worked really hard on it. Um, are you a B fan, Alyssa? Because I know a lot of people are not. And personally, like, I mean, I've never been stung by these. So like, I know people have really bad experiences with it, but I don't know. Are you like, I have been stung, but I'm still totally a bee fan. Um, when it gets dark, they, they start to fall asleep and I actually have pet them. They fall asleep. Yeah. They get like, I don't know if it's like asleep, but they're a lot more mellow. They just kind of sit there and I have, I have pet them. I didn't get stung. So Wow. I just, I'm just like picturing you going up to like a beehive and being like sticking your finger in there and then like stroking their back. I'm not that brave. That's funny. I mean, do you ever, I feel like, do they sleep like alone? I thought they always go back to like their I'm not sure. Hives. All I know is that late at night they will hang out on the flowers and they're just definitely a little more lethargic. Maybe they find their way home, but. Oh, interesting. Maybe they're in like a food coma or something. Yeah. It could from totally like the be whole day. Too. I don't know. I kind of want to tell a bee story, but <laughs> that might be a little off topic for this. You can tell a bee story. Do you guys want to hear a bee story? Well, it's actually not even that interesting, but um, my sister was at swim practice once and it was like one of those huge black bees. Like, I don't know if you ever... The carpenter bees. I is that those. what they're called? But they're like huge. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I don't know, but we used to have a lot of them on like the grass. Um, and so we'd have to like run laps, sometimes like barefooted on the grass like before swim practice and like and my sister literally got stung by one but she didn't realize it until she like looked down on her shirt and there's literally this huge black bee on her so shirt bad. that was just like dead <laughs> and then yeah that wasn't as exciting as I thought it was gonna be but anyway yeah so watch out you definitely don't want to step on a bee I have yet to step on a bee um but I don't think I have definitely be careful where you walk yeah so anyway um I just love like the way the colors like pop and like the little contrast of it. But yeah, I appreciate that. I'm that's definitely something I liked about it. And I did like a shallow depth of field so you can really 
pay attention to the bee and the flower and see the details, which I really like. Ooh, that's fancy. Wait, what was that that you said? Shallow depth, depth of, of field. field. What yeah. does that mean? That's the term for like when the background is blurred. So it's almost oh. like a fancy term for portrait mode on your iPhone. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't really take photos. Well, not with like a super fancy camera. So thank you for educating us on what that means. Now I know shallow depth, wait, depth of field, <laughs> shallow depth of field. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm literally going to be pulling that out in my vocabulary now. Um, oh my gosh. Wait, what, what did you name this picture? I don't remember. I believe I named that upside Oh, wait, I kind of want to talk. There is this one picture. It's a praying mantis and it almost looks like it's like, like waking up for the day and it's like sunny and it looks really happy. So I don't know, maybe tell us about like, what does like the title mean? Maybe like, does it have a meaning behind it? And like, I know this picture actually makes me really happy and it just like makes me think of, I don't know, it's so like warm and like yellow and like. That's Summer. exactly what I hope to achieve with my photography. So I appreciate yes. that. <laughs> That's what I got from it. That's what the title was kind of based on was like part of it. I did it because he was upside down and I thought it was funny. And then also because I thought it was like uplifting. Um, I think I did take it in the morning. So he was, I think, hunting for his lunch. But I just thought it was a really cheery photo. It was kind of like a little moment of both of us looking at each other like, what's going on? And yeah, I feel like it's very, very fun, very bright. Like, I feel like this could be a, like, movie, like, cover for, like, a Praying Mantis movie. Like, I know they have, like, bee movies, and they have a movie on, like, I don't know, some other insect, but they should totally have one on Praying Mantises. I would love that. The so, Secret Life you know of... you any producers, definitely hit no. me up. <laughs> the Secret Life of Praying Mantises, I feel like I would watch that. And Jane would love it, too. I would definitely <laughs> photograph for that. Side note, Jane does not like bugs. So anyway, it's okay. She'll she'll learn to love them. <laughs> yes. After after this, after this, <laughs> she'll have to love them. After this, she'll have to love them. But um, you kind of mentioned that like you took that picture with hopes of like people feeling like, I don't know, like happy, like happy feelings, so happy summer feelings. Um, did you pick up like photography as like a hobby at first? That was just kind of like, or have you like always been into art or like did someone, something kind of like inspire you to start? I've definitely pictures? been into art since I was a, a very young kid. I was drawing and taking art classes from a young age. Um, photography, I think I started in middle school when I, I got my first camera. I don't really remember why I wanted to do it, but I mean, I've always liked really been into nature and color and feelings and uh, a camera was just a w another way of doing that. Um, I kind of try to explore the same things in my art. I've drawn praying mantises, other bugs before too. So yeah, I guess I feel like I can't really imagine myself not doing art. So it's just always been there. Yeah. No, that's super cool that you're also like an art major because I yeah. know like a lot of people like it, but they're like, kind of scared to like pursue it I don't know yeah I'm hoping to do graphic design so I would love if I could put a little bee on a chocolate bar or something I would, oh my gosh I would do that yeah guys if you're a new new company new business small <laughs> business hit Alyssa up hit her up um should we talk about like your drawings now or like your, your sure um we could talk about your self-portrait maybe first. So like, I know when we first saw this, like the visual media team saw this, we were like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And Dave really loved it, um, who is another um, guy that's on our visual media team. Um, and I know that you called this the perfectionist, correct? Yeah. yeah. So do you just want to tell us maybe a little bit about kind of what in like inspired this is it pastel or it's colored pencil, Prismacolors? Oh, colored pencil. Okay. This like, yeah. So this drawing, um, slash like maybe the name behind it, the meaning behind it. Sure. So funnily enough, I actually left the room while you guys were looking at all of my she pieces. Did. She did. Um, so if it's not clear, I am definitely a perfectionist. And one thing about me is I really like to have things even like if I've tied one of my shoelaces longer, I'm going to fix it. So they're both even. And so I 
just wanted to make a piece that was like purposefully, intentionally not even. And like, I'm cool with it. Um, I definitely would not be cool with it if my hair was cut like that, but I kind of explored the idea of that, just the idea of asymmetry. And then I also experimented with some different artistic techniques that I hadn't before to try to like break out of the perfectionism. Um, so I've got a, a lot of different lines there. And I honestly don't even do portraiture very often. I do only do self-portraits when I do. So it was just very explorative for me. Mm -hmm. No, I really like the bright, like blue background. I feel like that's a really nice contrast with like, it makes you pop. You in the picture pop. Thank um, you. But yeah, no. So um, I definitely work with color very deliberately if I can. I've taken some color theory classes and I just find it really fun. So no, I definitely like, I know a little bit about color theory. Like I could probably like tell you that Navy and what was that color that it never should go with? And well, apparently people think that Navy and black shouldn't go together, but I feel like it's not the case. I don't know. Controversial, unpopular opinion. I think that navy and black is fine going together, but I'd have to agree. No. I don't think, I think if you try hard enough, any colors can go together. Yeah. No. Sp spoken like a true artist, Alyssa. <laughs> spoken like a true artist. Um, yeah. No. So I just love like the contrast in like your work and even in like your other work with like the shapes and stuff. Like, um, I really like all the like oranges and like purples that you use. And so you're not afraid to like mix those colors together. I appreciate that. That's definitely a, a big reason of why I turned to colored pencil is because it's really highly saturated and I really enjoy that. No, I was so impressed that you were able to get it like, I don't know. I feel like whenever I'm, maybe the colored pencil I'm using is like Crayola. Well, no shade to Crayola, but like I can't get it to be like even or like dark enough in like total in the whole area. Like some parts are always just like a tiny bit lighter and it like annoys me. But actually like yours looks really, it's like so nice and even, like it's so impressive. Thank you. That's, that's more of my perfectionist side for sure. <laughs> this is me fangirling over <laughs> Alyssa's work. I'm hey, literally like, I how did you get it, it like that? <laughs> I, I'm not really sure if it's the colored pencil cause I haven't experimented with a lot of them, but I, I just kind of pressed down really hard and it definitely makes the pencil go away a lot faster, but I'm, that's what I like. So it's worth it to me. Yeah. I mean, what's your like process when you are like drawing like these kind of things? Like, do you like outline it first or do you kind of have Definitely. like an idea in your head? I, so this specific piece, actually, the, the one we were speaking about is called city lights. I think, um, I, I first usually will sketch it out in a sketchbook. I usually take a little one with me in my bag. Um, and I just sketch it out multiple times, different ways to see how I like it, especially with abstract compositions. I'll have pages and it's just like the same shape that's slightly different. So I get the right one. Um, and then I, I move on to figuring out color once I have one I like. And this one I had originally done cyan, yellow and magenta, and I did it in watercolor. And I was not a fan of how that turned out at all. Oh, dang. And I kind of scrapped it for a couple months. And then I came back to it and I totally changed the color, changed the medium. And I, I just kind of try to figure out what works. And I felt like that worked really well. I think it worked really well. Thank Again, you. you should be looking at these pictures as you're listening to this podcast. Hint, hint. But yes, no, I really love this one. And I know you had another one that was also kind of similar to this one too. I'm not sure if that was, I don't think it was accepted. Oh. That's okay. Oh, but uh, yeah, I, I do work with a lot of abstract shapes. At least I try to. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of the other ones I do are either colored pencil or pastel. Do these like shapes kind of just like form in your mind? Like, yeah. like this picture gives I mean, off boba, but <laughs> like Alyssa will tell you about the little boba and Kiki. The linguistic phenomena. theory. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I kind of try to like, this is going to sound really art, really artist, but I will just take a sheet of paper and then I just kind of draw whatever squiggly lines come to my head and I just do it over and over again until I find one I like. And then I work on that. 
Oh, I like that. I like that. Definitely when I find myself bored, I'm like the swirl type of girl. Like I'll just do like a huge squirrel and, and take up the entire page during it. But maybe I'll maybe I'll get to try and recreate some of your photos by doing yeah, that. Yeah, just do know. little shapes all over. Yeah, a little Alyssa workshop, an art workshop. Go for it. Um, no, I definitely love that. Oh, there's Michael's little template. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Did he miss my caterpillar? Oh my gosh, you're so right. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm literally saying everyone's my, everything's my favorite. But um, Alyssa has this one that's caterpillar and it's like a human head <laughs> with, with a caterpillar body. Actually, yeah, literally go ham. Tell me about this one. Like, where was your inspo for this? And like, what made you kind of decide that you wanted to go this kind of random route I don't know yeah I'm I mean it is kind of random uh the piece is called disconnected and I find with a lot of my art I kind of draw up an idea like I'll just it'll randomly pop into my head the ones that aren't abstract I'll just be sitting and it randomly pops into my head and then I kind of have to figure out like why did I think of that like why was I sitting trying to sleep and I just thought of this um and I definitely had to do that for this piece. So I think that it comes from a place of like, um, my anxiety. Um, and so sometimes I'll feel like I get this thing where I feel really anxious in my body and my body feels is in a very panicked state. I'm shaky. I don't want to eat that kind of stuff, but I don't have like any thoughts that accompany that. Like I don't have conscious things that I'm actually worrying about my body just feels like that. And so I definitely feel very separate from my body in that way. And I just decided to draw that with a caterpillar. Um, I don't know why I chose a caterpillar, but I did. <laughs> um, I mean, I like bugs as you know, but yeah, yeah. I, it was just an outlet for that. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think it's just like, when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, that's, there's a, there's a lot like, but I definitely like, I know a lot of people can relate to like the anxiety thing, like kind of feeling like it's almost like an out of body experience. Like almost it was like you were bit, saying, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I'm like, it's nice that you're able to kind of articulate it in that creative way or like that creative outlet. I think it um, helps. I was definitely nervous to put the piece out there cause it is very random. <laughs> Again, you guys need to look at this, but, um, yeah, no, but I just love like the teal. Like, I don't think I've really seen too much of like the teal and like the green and like the yellow that you used, which is, I think, is that the supposed to be like the moon or is that just like a, I was circle. Uh, the yellow circle is kind of a little bit of a trademark in all my pieces. I include it in most of my abstract pieces and a lot of my my uh, representational pieces as well. So I mostly did it for the sake of like, I just, I always do it. I enjoy it. But in this case, I kind of wanted it to be like the sun and then the blue, would, the teal color was like a really bright sky. And I kind of wanted it to almost look like you could feel the heat. Like it's a hot day. Oh, Needed. oh, I love that. I feel, I mean, I, I guess I was kind of thinking of like another way to illustrate the exhaustion of it. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, yeah, no, this is just such a cool piece. Like you did so well. Thank with you. This. Mm -hmm. Moral of the story, guys, Alyssa loves bugs <laughs> and she has circles in every one of her paintings or in her pictures. Most of them. <laughs> Most of them. Most of them. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you kind of want to like talk about regarding honestly anything? Like we can Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I'm I, not very good at talking about my stuff. <laughs> no, I think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. I'm like I'm like what question should I ask you next? Like what do you guys want to know? As you're if, really good at coming up with questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, thanks. As if I'm like there's like a live audience. I'm like, guys, let me know what you want to hear from Melissa. Like you want to like, at, maybe you should add like your handles. I so if you, guys, if you guys, if you guys want to, you know, hear from more from Melissa, get some more things. Once you check out our website and also our literary magazine. Um, yeah. She's going to tell you guys her Instagram handle. Yeah. So I share my artwork on an Instagram account called Alyssa, A-L-Y-S-S-A, -S -S Marie, 
M A R I E Artworks. And I also have an account for my photography called Alyssa Marie Pictures. And I have all of these posted on there, as well as the website, of course. And some other pieces that weren't accepted, you could check out. Totally. You guys should do that. You should, You for sure should do that. Um, give her a... I almost said subscribe. This is not YouTube. <laughs> subscribe to my Instagram, please. Yeah, subscribe to the Instagram. Um, anyway, it was so nice talking to you guys, talking with you, Alyssa. Thank talking you. to you guys as if you guys are... Anyway, so thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining us um, for the FLC Literary Magazine, The Parlay Podcast. You can check out more of our stuff at flcparlay.org or on Instagram at theparlay.flc. There you go. Those are the ones. And those are all lowercase. Yes. So, yes, definitely check us out. Thank you for joining us today. Peace out. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Thanks Peace for interviewing out. me.